five of Money Revealed. You know, we've been talking a lot in this series about investment, so I want to have an investment conversation with you. There's nowhere else on the planet where you can get this assembly of information that will talk to you about how to create wealth, how to protect wealth, and how to grow your wealth. So I think a great investment for you would be in Money Revealed. If you believe in this project and what we're doing and you're finding value in this information, then you should own it. So please make an investment in Money Revealed. There's multiple packages available. Just pick the one that's right for you and revisit this information over and over again. Now we have a great episode set up for you. So let's jump right into episode five of Money Revealed. with great anticipation. He's a personal hero of mine. He's somebody I've admired for many, many, many years. And when I had the opportunity to sit down and have a conversation with him about money and entrepreneurism and his life, it was a highlight for me. And now I get to share it with you. Enjoy my interview with Whole Foods co-founder and CEO, John Mackey. John, thanks so much for your time. I really look forward to this interview. Thanks for inviting me. You have a foundation, I think, from your college days, maybe before, in, in philosophy, studying it intently. What role did that play in your life as an entrepreneur? I mean, it played a huge role. People oftentimes ask the question, if you're studying philosophy, is like, what good is that for? Right. But philosophy really taught me how to think. Mm -hmm. Taught me how to think critically, rationally, to see what's a bad argument, what's a good argument, mm -hmm. to be able to defend my positions with logic and reason and facts and evidence and so few people actually do that mm -hmm. and those people are just uh, go through life just being ruled by their emotions and they're unable to actually ever sort of um, get clarity so philosophy helped me see more clearly and if you're going to be in business uh, f deceiving yourself or fooling yourself is a very, very bad thing to do. You have to be able to see things clearly or you're not going to make good decisions. So absolutely foundational. And do you still use it to this day as far as you know, your thinking and your process for you know, how to make decisions? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I still study philosophy. Yeah. It's not like uh, I figured everything out. <laughs> so I'm uh, still learning, still growing, and still enjoy studying philosophy. It's one of the things I do. What got you started in being an entrepreneur and going into business? I mean, I wasn't, uh, I didn't self-identify as an entrepreneur for a long time. I didn't set out to be an entrepreneur. I mean, I didn't study any business classes when I went to the university, University of Texas and Trinity in San Antonio. I kept going back and forth between those two. And I basically just took electives. I studied philosophy and world literature, the humanities of all kinds, psychology, anthropology. I was trying to figure out the meaning of life and mm -hmm. meaning of my life in particular, what my own purpose was. And I wasn't. I moved into this vegetarian co-op when I was 23 years old. Mm -hmm. It was a housing co-op. I think they had about 18 people living there, two two per room. And it was. I wasn't a vegetarian at that time, but I actually just thought I'd meet a lot of really interesting people in right. the vegetarian co-op. And I. But I was interested in all things counterculture. And so there were, yeah. This bunch of hippies living there going to going to school and I had a food awakening there mm -hmm. where I, I learned how to cook I learned about natural foods I learned about organic foods and the more I learned the more passionate I got about it mm -hmm. so then I went to work at this small natural food store to earn some money and I fell in love with retailing and I thought to myself you know I could do this I could I could have my own store and I went back to the co-op one night and pitch my girlfriend and uh, what do you think about opening our own store and be a vegetarian store and uh, and and she was very excited about it I oftentimes think my life would have been perhaps very different if she had said that is really, like really a stupid idea mm. I don't want I don't want to do that I don't want to go into business it's a dumb idea I might have dropped it right there but when you're young and idealistic and you don't have as much to lose uh, we went out and hustled $45,000. We thought we needed 50, but we can only get 45, so we opened a little bit short. And it was in an old house. The first store was called Safer Way. Mm -hmm. And I 
was just passionate about selling healthy food to people. They, people asked me what was the original purpose of Safer Way, and it was like, well, um, it was to sell healthy food to people, have fun, and earn a living. Right. And uh, we did all of those things. Renee and I actually moved out of the co-op and moved into the, it was in an old house where the first store was. So we lived on the, first floor was a uh, store, and the second floor was a, a cafe, a vegetarian cafe, and the third floor was an office and where Renee and I had a futon and we just slept there at night. So I literally lived in the first store. Yeah. Uh, so I just kind of followed my heart, I followed my passion, and that led me on the journey. So I didn't, wasn't, you know, didn't like go to business school and say, there's a huge market opportunity in this whole natural organic, I've done a study on it, and wow, we think it's going to be X amount of hundreds of millions or billions of dollars someday, and we want to get in on the ground floor. It was like, I'm interested in healthy natural foods, I like doing it. So we did it. And that's the interesting thing. You had no business school training, no business background. What made you think that you could open a retail store, you know, deal with inventory suppliers, the whole thing? Or did you not know entirely what you were getting into? I mean, I think one of the advantages of being young mm -hmm. is not only do you have a lot of energy, uh, but you don't know what you can't do. Right. You don't yet know your limitations. And that enables the young to, we usually depend upon a lot of our breakthroughs with young people because they, they naturally think outside the box because they haven't never been in the box. And they naturally uh, just tend to be more creative and, and uh, you see many of the innovations that are happening in our society that shift things are done by people yeah, in their, in their 20s. Mm -hmm. I mean, in my generation, you know, how old was Bill Gates when he started Microsoft, or, or Steve Jobs when he started Apple, or Michael Dell when he was in his college dorm selling computers. I mean, or, and now, you know, how old was Mark Zuckerberg when he started Facebook? I mean, it's story after story after story of very young people that just went for it and were successful. In line with that, uh, you know, skipping forward a minute, you know, I serendipitously ran into you at a Whole Foods in Park City, Utah, and I saw you talking to the young people who were the workers in the store. Mm -hmm. So you still, you know, and I don't think I wouldn't have known this, that you still show up at the stores, you talk to the people and the staff who are working there, you're interacting with them. What is the, what's the motivation behind you doing that? I mean, it's, it's, a, uh, it's one of the highest leverage things that I do because, rightly or wrongly, because I'm the co-founder and all the other founders left over 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and the CEO for 40 years. Uh, within Whole Foods, I'm a legend. Mm -hmm. And uh, with so many stores today, a lot of the team members, you'll never get a chance to meet me. So when I can tour stores and connect with the people, it really, we know it really raises the morale. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> I used to go into the stores and, you know, try to, I'd put my operations hat on and I'd see what was wrong with the store. But what I realized is I'm like the daddy, right? Mm -hmm. So they really want my approval. They don't want my criticism. Right. A lot of times they've gotten up at, you know, come to the store at three in the morning to make it look as absolutely perfect as they can because they know I'm coming. The last thing they want to hear is how they could be doing it better. Right.